Thank you, uh, Karen. It's wonderful to see such a big uh, group here today. Uh, my name is Constance Mulpas. I am um, a program officer with the OCLC Research Group based in San Mateo in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm going to uh, recap very briefly a program of work that culminated recently in a publication of a report entitled The Evolving Scholarly Record. It was published just earlier this year. As with so much of the work uh, produced by OCLC Research, it's the work of many minds and hands. Uh, several of the uh, members of the team that produced this work are present here today. So Eric, Ischel, uh, and myself were part of the team that produced this report. We undertook this work uh, with the objective in mind of providing a conceptual apparatus, a kind of heuristic device that could support some cross-domain conversation about important changes in the scholarly record and to think about implications uh, for libraries associated with these changes. Uh, as we were scoping this project, we were, of course, uh, very concerned about not duplicating the good work that's already been produced by so many others. As you'll all be uh, aware, there's been a considerable amount of attention paid to changes in researcher workflows in the networked environment, certainly a great deal of attention to changes in scholarly communication in, uh, in the web, um, changes in uh, disciplinary information needs. Uh, we were not interested in retracing any of that work. We were instead interested in identifying a gap that we could fill. And in the course of our uh, literature review, it was striking to find uh, the uh, remarkable absence of consensus uh, around what actually constitutes the scholarly record. So Jane Stevenson, as an example, um, is the manager of the UK Archives Hub. And she, as a professional practicing archivist, has observed that it is increasingly difficult for her to discern uh, where the scholarly record begins or ends. This is an important acknowledgement for our community in appraising, acquiring, selecting material for stewardship. If we're uncertain about where the boundaries of the scholarly record lie, it's going to be increasingly challenging for us to understand our role as, uh, as custodial agents. So this then began to give us the shape of the project we were interested in, a conceptual apparatus that would help support dialogue around a delineation of the boundaries of the scholarly record. We were interested in, in undertaking this work along two dimensions. One, uh, deepening our understanding of the nature of the content, the stuff of the scholarly record, but also understanding the importance of the stakeholder ecosystem in which that scholarly record uh, is produced and managed. So two strands in this work. On the content side, we tried to resist the impulse to simply inventory or census uh, the variety of different content types that are within or outside of the scholarly record, although clearly one thinks immediately of the uh, uh, enduring attention to scholarly monographs and to articles in the research and scientific journal literature, whether that be print or electronic. Increasingly, though, I think there's no dispute that we're seeing new kinds of content. Uh, data sets would be a, a, a perfect example here. There's a growing acknowledgment uh, that we need to be thinking seriously about infrastructure for research data management, and research data sets are increasingly viewed as scientific, scholarly publications in their own rights, and one could enumerate uh, many other examples. For example, code libraries are no longer seen as something simply coextensive with the published literature, but are increasingly acknowledged to have uh, a, a functional role in the scholarly record in their own right. So we were very sensitive to this growing diversity, div uh, diversification of content that is deemed to be within the scholarly record. But I, I say we were also sensitive to the importance of stakeholder perceptions in delineating boundaries of the scholarly record. So for example, we can think um, about differences of opinion across the stakeholder community. Faculty are likely to consider the scholarly record that which is the material for which uh, they receive credit for the purposes of credentialing, promotion, uh, and tenure. Anything that doesn't count in that context is a little bit less interesting from the perspective of the scholarly record. In the research community, we have a perhaps more capacious understanding of what constitutes the scholarly record. We would extend that to include, in general, anything that is citable, referenceable, uh, that can be dereferenced. Because for the purposes of scholarship and research, if I can't cite your work, it's not a part of the scholarly record. So related to the faculty perception, but uh, different in some important ways. Clearly, publishers have an enormously important role in this ecosystem. Uh, in as much as they've traditionally provided the apparatus through which peer review, um, an important uh, critical part of the boundary definition for the scholarly literature um, is 
defined, we would also carve out a role for the organizations and entities that are engaged with research assessment. So this would include certainly the kinds of organizations uh, that are producing and attentive to metrics like uh, journal citation impact factors and their ex extension to understanding uh, the monographic literature, but also uh, the attention to the kind of contrail of scholarly work now that we see in the altmetrics community where citation in, uh, in the social media network is regarded as, as credible a citation uh, as, as uh, the traditional citation. Uh, and clearly, uh, libraries would see an important role for themselves and indeed uh, have one in this ecosystem in as much as libraries, by dint of acquiring, selecting, making selective investments in preservation, are creating de facto the scholarly record by determining what will be available in, uh, in the future for scholarly use. So as I say, against that background, we were interested to develop a conceptual framework that would enable us to have sensible conversations about important trends that are altering the scholarly record. Clearly, a key change here is the uh, ongoing transition from uh, scholarly work that was primarily print-centric to, to work that is much more now embedded in social and technological networks. One effect of this uh, shift is a blurring of boundaries, as I've said, a diversification of the kinds of content that are deemed part of the scholarly record. So from our perspective, what we see is work that has always been performed in service of producing the scholarly record as it's uh, reflected in our articles, uh, journals, and monographic literature, is now surrounded by associated work products that are regarded as scholarly publications uh, in their own right. And this is certainly true of the process that goes into the production of that traditional scholarly record, uh, the outcome. So as examples of this, one can note that uh, there are scholarly publication vehicles that now surround that traditional publication uh, in, the, in the centered outcome. For example, we see journals uh, whose exclusive purview is the publication of research methodologies. Not the findings of the research, not the data, simply the research methodology. Similarly, there are journals completely dedicated to the publication of data sets. The data set itself becomes the publication. And on around the, uh, the cycle of producing scholarly work, similarly, in the afterlife or aftermath of that traditional uh, publication, we see growing attention to creating an apparatus that supports uh, the publication of resources that are discreetly identifiable. So that it, to a certain extent, this, it, this doesn't reflect a change in the way work is done, but the fact that we can I have uh, referenceable uh, uh, unique identifiers assigned to work products around this whole circuit does represent an enormous change in, uh, in the scholarly record. Um, associated with this is uh, a change in the nature of the stakeholder ecosystem. So as I said, we were interested both in the content side of the scholarly record and in the stakeholder uh, side. So alongside our framework for understanding uh, emergence of new content types, we wanted uh, to identify some important changes in the stakeholder ecosystem rather than providing an inventory, a name check of all of the or entities and organizations that have a role here. We were interested in providing a kind of functional typology so we could start to appreciate the extent to which changes in the scholarly record are disintermediating, decentering, disrupting uh, traditional relationships between stakeholders who were responsible for fixing or publishing the scholarly record, creating uh, environments in which uh, content could be created or uh, providing rules around custodial stewardship. We're seeing all of this getting mixed up in some very interesting ways that we explore in the report. I clearly don't have time to address them here. What's important from our perspective is that many of the traditional stakeholders are renegotiating their roles. They may have done one thing in the past, they want to do something new tr now. And this is particularly true clearly in the library sector where our traditional role around custodial care of the scholarly record is now shifting. We want to provide services that are associated with the creation, with the publication of scholarly work. So very important uh, changes here. And to the extent that we're seeing custodial roles renegotiated, redistributed, uh, this represents both a threat and an opportunity for, uh, certainly for the academic library sector. Some consequences of these changes from our perspective is that we see partial, increasingly partial representation of the scholarly record in individual repositories in as much as that scholarly work now is distributed across a network of different uh, publication and custodial regimes. This has important consequences for discovery and management of the scholarly record and uh, overall we think is increasing um, the risk of a loss of coherence in scholarly work. 
Um, that's very briefly a, a high overview of what we were looking at in the report. We are continuing this work. We're using the framework to support some community consultation around the nature of the scholarly work and uh, what changes in the scholarly record mean for libraries. Uh, some of my colleagues have returned from a very successful meeting in Amsterdam in which we use the framework uh, to that end. We're also looking at a, a follow-on project that will be specifically looking at this reconfiguration, a redistribution of stewardship roles uh, for uh, different kinds of uh, scholarly record content. So I will uh, leave it there and introduce my colleague, Denis, Dennis Massey.